Hello and welcome to another video. So today we shall have a look at this camera from Lights. It's not very hard to guess. It's a Leica of course, but it's no ordinary Leica, it's the Leica M5. So before we start, let me issue a very serious warning. I'm not at all into the Leica folklore. So, um, I will share my views with you today based on the M5 for what it is, the camera. So I couldn't care less about tradition, this, if the camera is made out of gold, candy, bronze, brass, well, whatever. So please bear in mind that uh, we shall only have a look at it as a camera and as a camera that I use for street photography which, good or bad, it's <laughs> the only thing that I do, as an amateur, of course. And um, in that light, we shall then have a look at this M5. So, with that warning issued, we can proceed. So, the like M5 was the successor of the M4, obviously, and it was launched in 1970. One, And, as usual, I normally show you cameras that uh, were part of the competition back then to give you a context, also uh, a reference for size, but today it's a bit difficult. This is the Leica M5 competition back then. Yeah, so no competition, because by 1971 the rangefinder world was no more, so um, the big brands had already ceased production and there were no direct competitors for Leica in terms of rangefinders. Anyway, I managed to uh, find one contemporary rangefinder, uh, that, that's a Leica style rangefinder, that's obviously Russian, but it's not the usual Zorki fed it's more, I chose the Kiev 5 because it also is absurdly big, heavy and I want you to have the best of comparisons so that you may judge. The Kiev 5 is a very big, ugly camera so it has the ability, that magical power of making the M5 look Pretty, small, svelte, <laughs> anything. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm joking, obviously. I do like the Kia 5. It's really a great shooter. It's a great camera. I really like it, but it's very, very big and heavy. Still, not as heavy as the M5. So moving on with the comparisons. Um, I've got a Canon 7S here. I removed the 50mm uh, 0.95 lens for obvious reasons and you see that the Canon 7, this the 7S or the normal 7 is not really much smaller than, sorry, than the uh, Leica M5, still it is. They share some um, similarities as you can see, both are chamfered on the sides, well, Canons have always been, uh, Leica not so much, oh dear, that, how erratic of me to suggest such a, such a thing, um, and so they are very similar in size, even in styling, well, given that um, the 7 goes back almost 10 years before the uh, M5. Moving on, we have an SLR, in this case, the Nikon F2. Well, and also the M5 doesn't look too bad compared to the Nikon F2. Still, the Nikon F2 is an SLR. It's not a rangefinder. It has this huge prism, but of course it has other possibilities and specifications that being a rangefinder, the M5 doesn't have. And still, the M5 is 
uh, heavier than the Nikon F2 with this configuration. So let me put this aside. And finally, to get to close this chapter, uh, well, we need an M. So the M6 TTL that I have here, it's um, the body size wise, it's the same as the M3, M4. So um, you can see that it is a bit smaller. The like M5 was really very different from previous Leicas. And so we shall have a go at, I shall have a go at describing the best I can and what I like about the uh, M5. Please bear in mind that this is not a video manual for the camera. Okay, there is a, there are manuals online which you can uh, have a look or read. This, these are my impressions and things that I value as uh, you know qualities in a camera that I value. So the top plate of the uh, M5 is very very different from previous Leicas and it is dominated by this huge shutter speed dial that Leica fans hate and I think it's very very well designed. So they really didn't get the size wrong. It is big for one reason. It even protrudes, you see, from the top of the camera and this for a very good reason, ergonomics, good ergonomics. So the Leica M5, if I could, you know, choose a word for it, it would be either good ergonomics or efficiency. So nothing to do with uh, things that you cannot uh, tangible uh, express uh, in words. So this shutter speed dial is ergonomical because it allows me for my fingertip, my indicator, my finger, to move it and at the same time keep my eye on the viewfinder while I turn it. And so I don't really have to come here, take the camera out uh, of, uh, or take my eyes out of the viewfinder, come here and, you know, move the um, shutter dial, small shutter dial uh, that most M's are afflicted with well not mine uh, but that's an exception and still people weren't too thrilled apparently about that another thing that I don't understand why uh, so plus I do have the viewfinder information concerning shutter speeds so the shutter speed selection or choice it's really speedier and nice uh, using the M5. Uh, again, I don't know why people don't like the system. I find it very, very nice. The advanced lever, smooth as always, quiet. The usual window for uh, frame number that we get on all Leicas. So this is a, a very nice uh, arrangement that I like. A lot. Here we've got the hot shoe. For me, it's pretty useless. I don't use flash ever, but it's nice that I've got a hot shoe there. Or oh, normally, what I do with this hot shoe is I have a separate viewfinder for my wide angles, and that's it. Coming here, we've got the ISO setting. Oh dear, yes. So the, uh, the Leica M5 does have a meter and it's no ordinary meter, it's a TTL meter and on top of that it's a spot meter. So many things that um, Leica fans couldn't really swallow at the same time. Absent is, uh, from here, is the rewind crank. Instead we've got lights and engravings, Wetzlar, Germany. The crank, as you have seen, is at the bottom of the camera, there. And we all know that how iconic rewind cranks and knobs are for Leica fans. So um, whoever designed the M5 uh, either 
put the rewind crank at the bottom for a technical reason or because it clearly wanted to send a message this is a new beginning this is a new camera nothing to do with previous ones well i like to think it was the second option <laughs> and here we've got the uh, sockets for electronic flash and bulb if you are using the wire and now i must come back to the shutter speed dial you have this is a mechanical camera meaning it does not need batteries to operate although this one takes batteries but it's for the meter only so it has all the uh, standardized shutter speeds with less one speed which is one second so it, we have all the standardized speeds uh, from half a second to a thousand of a second and you have even half increments between them except on flash on this setting at least this is what Leica says um, and then you have this curious position let me show you it says B and you have this long line another B and from that line you've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 5, 15, 30 seconds obviously these are shutter speeds but make no mistake the camera is not capable of long exposures so this is the longest one and the moment you engage one second you are into B territory so it's uh, always the time you push you take to push the uh, shutter button down that counts so the camera is not capable of any uh, you know long shutter uh, speed so why do they mention this this uh, well uh, I think it has to do with this thing here it's um, a calculator a disk calculator so you get also I still have to restore it because it's uh, it's fading fast um, it's the normal thing so this is just a film reminder what type of film do you have inside the camera but outside uh, it asks it acts like a calculator this was very common in the 50s so cameras that didn't have meter but this one is not because it doesn't have a meter because it has um, it can be handy because you see there is also that line here B and B it starts at one second and here it doesn't stop at 30 it goes all the way to 120 seconds so theoretically I think um, they have put this here for to compensate well the absence of slow shutter speeds and to help you a bit with the calculation just a bit it's not that simple but so when you enter into B mode with the Leica M5 the meter doesn't work anymore okay so you need to take uh, the last possible reading feasible reading if you want to go with uh, further down the shutter speed scale so imagine that um, my uh, last reading with a meter was f2 and half a second so i come here and obviously because exposure values are coupled uh, with diaphragm the diaphragm uh, value and the shutter speed value so i come here and i put b one second into two okay then i know um then i know this is more like this that i will need 2.8 the next uh, available combination uh, for um two seconds i will need four for four seconds 5.6 for eight seconds and all all that so um what they've done here is a sort of sos uh, calculator for long exposure so you just came here for instance then let me check again for four it would be four and i would do like this then i would count one cat two cats three cats four cats obviously if i didn't have a tripod i would use a remote 
um, shutter release. Well, it is more or less like that. Just a curiosity, I'm, I'm really wasting my time here because it's, it's of no use, at least to me, but just to give you an explanation. This is how I think it works, really. Uh, perhaps like as another uh, function or utility that I don't know of. Okay, coming here, you've got the battery compartment. It uses the old 625 battery, 1.35 volts, so mercury, no longer available. I use the 1.4 air zinc one without any sort of uh, problem. Here at the front, this is pure like, except for this illuminating window here. This is for so that you can see the sh viewfinder information. Yes, for the first time in the Leica, you get viewfinder information. So you get the shutter speeds, you get two needles that will help you uh, with exposure. So very nice indeed. But the rest here is pure normal Leica. The magnification of this viewfinder is uh, 0.72, which means that you get the first frame line that you get, the widest one, is 35 millimeter and it goes all the way to 135 millimeter uh, to help you to decide which lens put on the camera you have a lever here like you know like as M's which help you and you can on demand see other frame lines so that you might decide before choosing a lens to put on of course, automatically the camera selects the correct frame line according to the focal length. This lever also acts as a battery check for this one. So the camera really doesn't need a battery, but the meter does. So another first, well, that not even my M6 has a dedicated function for this. And here you've got the self timer. and planet release button and the lever that frees up the film in order to rewind. Coming to the bottom of the camera, so this is a tripod bush, of course, because you cannot drill anything here, and the rewind crank, the famous infamous rewind crank that fans do not really forgive. The M5 but let me tell you, it does a pretty good job at rewinding. And that's what rewind cranks are for. They should rewind the film. When they don't, we really can be mad at the rewind crank. This is not the case. So I'm here to tell you quite safely that the M5 rewinds film perfectly, as well as any other M. Also, it has a, a sort of a clutch where it doesn't move in the opposite direction, which is nice. And this is the release for the bottom plate because the Leica M5 is a bottom loading camera, meaning that you put film on it by removing this plate, like any other M camera or like a rangefinder before it and the famous door that the M3 also had and that's it well now that the motorbike is gone I can continue so um, most people including myself I'm horrified of bottom loading cameras this is the actual truth I'm really terrified horrified, whatever you want, because it's time-consuming and you'll get people saying, no, nah, it's not time-consuming at all. Um, it's very easy. Well, they can say whatever they want, but it's there. It's time-consuming. It's not as fast and easy as with a normal take-up spool, especially with Barnack Leica's or Barnack style of, of cameras, like the Russian Zorkis and Feds and, uh, well, even others. It's really time consuming. You have to uh, cut the uh, film tip to a certain length, so you waste film. People will tell you, no, 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 I don't waste film. No. Yeah, okay. But I think before this one, Leica came up with a system. I think the M4 
or at least some M4s, already have this system, which is the diamond, because of the shape of the loading spool, that makes this sort of, of bottom loading a breeze. So it is as fast, as convenient as a normal loading system. And this, yes, it's not a pain. So don't let, uh, don't be scared. Well, like uh, I was when um, someone, because I didn't start with uh, bottom loading with this system. So I started with Russian cameras and it's really a pain, an absolute pain. Um, then I got the M6 and uh, already having this system and really is a joy and very fast. So I am so confident that I am going to show you how it's, uh, it's loaded as soon as I find the film. So I'm going to show you how it's done. Hopefully everything goes okay. I don't know if you can see the spool inside. It's a diamond shape spool, just like the graphic here. And you really don't have to do anything special. You don't have to prepare the film. You don't have to cut a thing. This is a dummy film, of course. It's the one that I normally use for YouTube demonstrations. So it no longer works. So you just have to insert it like you normally would. And follow Leica's instructions and put the film tip just like they illustrate. Okay, the door here is to help you, of course, if you have any problems with the film. It doesn't look too, too good, does it? It doesn't seem to be properly done. But let me show you. It is. The system is really very, very efficient. And of course, we would put the cover back. And our M5 is ready for some action. So you see, it was really, really quick, as quick as any other, you know, classic system. Everything is going smoothly, but I'm going to open so that you can see for your eyes that I'm not cheating. Of course, you should never do this with a film, but this film is ruined for many years now. <laughs> so you see, it's perfectly flat and so no problem whatsoever. So this is one of the features that I like uh, about the M5. So it doesn't really uh, waste your time. You don't have to carry a scissors with you, uh, you don't have to prepare film, you don't waste film. It's only good news on this department. So basically, I'm sorry to, to say, in terms of um, things that you can see outside, I've covered <laughs> pretty much everything because the M5 is a very simple camera. Now we have to talk about the metering system of the M5. The M5 has a TTL meter, like I told you, but it's not an ordinary system, it's spot metering. And this scares the hell out of so many people. And it's really, there is no reason for that because the spot metering that we've got here has nothing to do with modern spot metering systems. While spot metering, modern spot metering systems uh, are really spot, 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 meaning that they can read about 1% of the image. Uh, this one is absolutely incapable of doing that. So it's much, much wider. Um, not, I think uh, the cell has uh, uh, reading capacity between 8 or 10 degrees, so it's completely different. It has nothing to do with modern systems. It is perfectly fit and it's very accurate and fit for almost any situation. Um, I am in no position to tell you that if it works well with slide film, because I only shoot black and white as you know, so film has a wide latitude range, uh, black and white also, so uh, 
if the camera would have you know a serious issue with the metering uh, only then would I notice but so far the uh, the frames and the negatives look um, you know uh, very well exposed uh, I have no frames that are over or underexposed meaning that the camera reads regularly and always in the same fashion I think is a it's a fantastic system it beats me why Leica warns people that the readings vary according if you take readings vertically or horizontally. I think this is an excess of uh, honesty. Possibly there is some variation where the, the arm that you shall see in a minute is positioned. I don't know. What I know is that they shouldn't really have written that. There, there is no need because I failed to notice during the two years now that I own this camera any variation in exposure either vertically or horizontally so they were far too honest and of course the internet being what it is there's this craze of people oh I don't want an M5 because the readings vertically vertical readings and horizontal readings are not the same how oh dear so all this because like I wrote it so it was really something that they should have avoided. With that said, I really like the metering system. So, so far, these are the good things about the M5 and of course, the display inside the viewfinder that I can show you, it's absolutely uh, elegant. It's um, very informative, elegant, concise and efficient. Very, very nice. One of the nicest manual setups that I've ever seen in a camera. Now let's go for what I don't like, and immediately, I'm sorry, I have to say this. For some reason, like I thought it would be a very good idea to equip the year M5 with just two strap lugs on the same side and not without one on the other side. This only applies on the first cameras made, which is the case of this one, um, because um, they changed. Because because of complaints, probably. So um, later cameras have a third lug, but this one doesn't. So it's absolutely stupid to concentrate on such a such a short space. Uh, the amount of weight that the M5 has of mass, and you have to carry this around your neck. It's really a pain in the neck. It's horrible. So it's uh, I really don't know. The idea behind it so I read it but I don't understand really the concept plus it, this is not healthy for your back your neck S consequences of this I carry the camera well around my head and wrist so I, I train my wrist instead of going to the gym to, for doing that <laughs> it's really a very poor idea I am glad that some some of them uh, have do have a third one which allows to carry it horizontally as well now not that I am really um, distressed about but the M5 can't use certain lenses either including from Leica's so some M lenses and uh, L39 lenses it can't be used with the M5 this conical lens is perfectly compatible with the M5 as any other normal lens is. The problem is with wide-angle lenses because the rear element can protrude inside the camera and uh, sh you know, shock go against an arm that we shall see in a minute. Not the case with these lenses. So for you to see I have to use a little trick so I have a screw mount lens, this is Russian, and I have a Voigtlander adapter here because you can use L39 lenses like a thread mount, like a thread mount, LTM, not M39, okay? M denotes diameter, so it's not just the diameter that's important. And with this adapter, which is a good thing, the M5 or any other M, behaves like the classic L39 camera, like the Canon. So we can use Canon lenses, Nikon lenses, Hoytlander, Russians, whatever, the new Chinese ones, 
but the reason why we must be very careful with the M5 is this because without the adapter you cannot see the metering arm and the metering arm works like this so this, the meter is on from the moment I advance the film so I cock the shutter and the arm comes to this position it's taking a reading right now so the moment that I press the shutter button it goes down the shutter opens we have an exposure and as long as I don't advance the film so the meter does not read the arm is in the parking position let's call it this arm of course it's an issue a potential issue because it's it has a lot of mechanic mechanics uh, and mechanical parts involved so it's bound to fail in the future but the worst thing that it can happen besides that is having a lens that goes very deep very close to the film plane and normally wide angles do that and it will of course damage the cell another issue with lenses is that the m5 cannot use for the very same reason collapsible lenses you know especially old Leica lenses which are collapsible go inside the body so anything that goes inside the body is off limits with the m5 well you can use it there is no problem in if you just don't um, put it inside in the parking position uh, if it's extended it's okay there's no problem for the m5 the problem is that we forget we tend to forget so and we put it back inside because that's the advantage of collapsible lenses to make compact package and disaster occurs i am pretty safe in that apartment because i don't like collapsible lenses so there is a way uh, you can put some tape around the collapsible lens um, to limit the travel but even so i don't like collapsible lenses so uh, it's not an issue for me i really don't don't like them either here or in any other rangefinder bearing in mind that so uh, if you forget you will destroy the metering system of the m5 admittedly this is the weakest uh, engineering uh, let's say um, part of the camera because it's it's going to break one of these days um, because the mechanics involved are really too much for what is asked another thing that you have to be prepared with the like m5 like in all likers it's a like m camera meaning that if you want to stay and as you should within the Leica system it means that you you will need a lot of money so Leica M lenses even old ones are really very expensive so you must count on that of course you have a reasonable and very cheap solution but this is cheating of course unless you are searching for a certain look etc I can't afford Leica lenses just have one M lens, which is a super angle one, because I'm crazy about uh, wide angles and super wide angles. And I use the Konik uh, M lenses. This is not really an endorsement. This is because um, it happened long before I had a, the uh, any Leica M. I, I used to have a Konik XR RF. Then I sold it because it was electronic, and uh, you know I was afraid that it would break and would become you know an expensive and uh, beautiful paperweight and before that happened I, I i really sold it with no lens so i kept the lenses this one and another one uh, and they are more than enough for me in terms of sharpness and uh, uh, and st with street photography you can use pretty much any lens because you're not really doing bouquet stuff bouquet whatever you want to call it um, I'm not into that as well, so not really, really given to photographic folklores or cliches. So for me, it's quite okay. But you must bear in mind that uh, it's expensive to own a Leica if you want to go full way, and it's understandable that he, one wants to do that. So this is 
or these are my thoughts about the Leica M5. I'm not going to publish any um, pictures taken with it because I've, I, I use so many lenses of, with it from Voigtlander to Koenig uh, to the Russians uh, and all that so this time I'm not go going to publish. There is a video of mine showing only film photography and there is each photography is identified with the camera uh, and lens that made it so you can have a check if you want. Well, I hope I wasn't too boring because I keep on going <laughs> because I like the M5 very much. It's, it has become one, if not my favorite, rangefinder as a shooter. I really couldn't care less of what people say about it. It shoots, it takes pictures, it, it is a delight of a camera, it is a high quality camera, it is affordable and bear in mind, whatever people tell you, this is not a Leica CL, far from it, okay? This is not a Leica CL, for, and not even in the wildest dreams of the Leica CL. This is a competitor or a mini or a maxi Leica CL, it's not, okay? So, I hope you have enjoyed my video, and I'll be back again with, uh, well, another review, or I don't like to call it reviews, really, more I like to share my thoughts with you about my cameras. Thank you. Bye-bye.